Once again, I've asked the community what's really important to them in a 3D printer. Manufacturers, open your ears and eyes because here's what we really want. This video you're watching now is a follow-up to one that I made a few years ago. In that, I put out a community post asking for your opinions on what you wanted in a 3D printer. Almost 1,000 people responded, and in that video, I shared some of the humorous responses, but also identified trends and opinions shared by many people. Finally, I suggested some concepts that could be viable. That video had more impact than you might think, so let me explain that and then we'll get to the new survey. Three years ago, let's explore the context behind the first survey. And at that time, 3D printer manufacturers were flooding the market with cheaper and cheaper clones. Instead of trying to introduce something innovative, the aim of many was to get their version on the market for a couple of dollars cheaper. That's why a lot of respondents identified that they were sick of corners being cut on budget printers. They wanted something that was tested properly and just worked, even if they had to pay extra for the privilege. That's why I proposed a Clone Plus a properly developed printer with great features out of the box that cost more instead of less. Six months after the video, I received this message from a 3D printer manufacturer. They were pleased with the community sentiments expressed in the video as they felt it aligned perfectly with the printer they were developing. That company, Bamboo Lab. This message was from Dr. Tao, the founder, who at that point had been developing the X1 for 18 months and was soon to release it. Not everyone loves Bamboo Lab and the approach that they took, but there's no denying their printers have been wildly popular and disruptive of the home 3D printing market. And that's largely because they delivered a package that met the needs and wants of consumers as identified in that video. So will your responses predict what's to come once more? Let's find out. Once again, I created a community post on YouTube, largely recycling the same graphic, but at least fixing the typo. However, this time to make my life easier, I used a Google form to act as a survey. As I'm compiling this video, we've had almost 1,600 responses. And on top of that, some people either ignored or missed the survey link, with 363 giving direct responses as a comment to that post. Thank you to everyone who took the time to respond. What does the community want in 2024? Let's work our way through. The survey was divided into three sections, and the first of those was called General Snapshot. In truth, the questions here are me trying to work out if my audience's interests and preferences align with my own. First up, how many 3D printers do you own? Many people just had one printer, but the majority was two to four, and a small amount had more than five, potentially running print farms. Next, I asked whether you mostly use resin or FDM 3D printing. And unsurprisingly, three quarters of my audience exclusively FDM print, with 20% only doing a little bit of resin. Next, the preferred slicer for FDM 3D printing. We're blessed with a lot of choice out there, so it's not a surprise to see the option split. However, Orca Slicer gets the win, followed by Prusa Slicer, Cura, Bamboo Studio, and Super Slicer. For those resin printing, what's their favorite slicer? As we saw in the earlier question, most of my audience don't resin print, but for those that do, it's a pretty even mix between Tutu Box and Lychee. Next, I asked if 3D printers are a tool or hobby. I'm somewhere in the middle, and it seems most people match my preference. Sometimes they want to make stuff, other times they're happy to tinker. The mostly a hobby and mostly a tool were the next most popular, and then the purely a hobby and purely a tool being the least popular. Next I asked, what type of things do you like to print? I provided a bunch of what I thought would be common answers, and people could tick more than one, as well as enter something in other that I might have forgotten. Looking at the results, it's clear that practical prints to solve problems in your life was very, very popular. 97% of people do this. 3D printer parts and upgrades was over three quarters. Decorative pieces, a little over half. Prototyping before manufacturing elsewhere, 38%. Prints to sell and profit from, just over a quarter. And cosplay and costumes being printed by just over 20% of people. And then from here, we have everything entered under other. And I'm seeing RC cars and drones come up a lot, as well as robotics. The last question in this section asked what your go-to 3D file site was. It seems that printables is the tight in here, the favorite of more than half, Thingiverse hiding on in second place, and then we go down to Thangs, Maker World, Yegi, and others. I found that interesting because my choices closely match yours. Is that me influencing you, you influencing me, or a bit of both? Let me know in the comments, and now let's proceed with the juicy bits. 
Manufacturers, in case you weren't paying attention, this is the section that applies to you. I first asked how interested you were in more expensive 3D printers that just work. And like many of the questions in this section, we're on a sliding scale from not interested to only interested. And that gives us this nice graph, and we can see that most people are trending in the direction that they'd still rather pay more for something that actually works. Although it's only a small amount who exclusively shop in this category. This is unsurprising as it mirrors the responses from last time. The next category is budget printers that need a little love to shine. Think race to the bottom and the three clones. This one was fairly balanced, but definitely biased more to the disinterested end. Plenty of people are willing to save some money if they have to do a bit of tinkering, but a significant amount are down this lower end where it's a deal breaker. The next category is a do-it-yourself kit where building the printer is the project. I'm thinking Vorons, Rat Rigs, etc. Looking at the results, I would say there's plenty of interest in these style kits. In fact, if we look at the shape of the graph, it's very similar to the JustWorks category. The way I see it, people want transparency when choosing a 3D printer. They're happy to spend big on a tool that just works, and they're happy to engage in a project that's going to take a lot of time. They just don't want to be conned by something that overpromises and underdelivers. Here's a big one. How important is open source hardware and software to you? And we have it makes no difference to me on the left through to I'll only buy things that are open source on the right. And as we can see, our results are skewed towards favoring open source. Once again, I fit with the majority. It's very important to me, but it's not an absolute deal breaker. But manufacturers take note, if all else is equal and you're open source versus your competition, you're definitely going to stand out. So how important is cloud connectivity to you? On the right, we have people who will only buy printers with cloud connectivity, and on the left, people who will avoid anything that connects to the cloud. And based on comments, I expected bias towards the negative, but not necessarily this strong. Manufacturers, make sure if you have anything cloud, you can 100% turn it off. AI is experiencing a huge surge in mainstream attention and popularity, so how important is it to us 3D printers? And what I've learned from this is that people are open-minded towards AI, but they're not convinced that it really has a good place yet. 50% said they don't mind it as long as they can turn it off, and a third said that they liked the idea, but it was currently limited. Only 7% said it was a deal breaker, and 81 people are looking to recreate the Terminator timeline. I finished this section by asking about specific features to gauge what people were actually interested in and what were just gimmicks. There's quite a few categories and people were asked to rate them from not interested at all up to extremely interested. The first is non-planar printing and that means a fully three-dimensional toolpath. I've explored this a couple of times and this video is linked in the description. And looking at this distribution curve, people are generally quite interested. I'm sure you're like me in thinking you won't use it on every print, but it would be great if more 3D printers and slicers could accommodate it. Next up, multi-color printing multiple colors of the same material used in one print. And again, this is something that people are fairly interested in. Not everyone, but most makers would like the capability. So how does that compare to multi-material, where we have two or more different materials, for instance, some rigid and some flexible? Multi-material, we see a big shift where many people are very interested in it. So manufacturers, tool changes, IDEX and similar is a good path to pursue. Next up, quiet operation, and I'm not only talking about the volume while printing, but also the volume when idle. Quiet operation was fairly popular, I expected probably a little bit higher. I wonder if people will put up with a loud printer if it means it's fast. And speaking of fast 3D printing, it's become a lot more mainstream, but is that from manufacturers pushing it, or customers actually wanting it? And here we can see that fast printing has become a priority. It's probably not the most important thing, but it is expected from most new printers. Something we don't see very often on 3D printers is active air filtration. So do people care? Based on this distribution, I would argue that people are fairly indifferent to air filtration, but it's still a topic I'd like to explore further in future videos. Related to this, what about having an enclosure, potentially with active heating? Given people said earlier on that they're interested in functional prints, it makes sense that these results are skewed towards having a printer that can handle high temperature filaments that warp. Hopefully more manufacturers include an enclosure as an option. How about smart sensors? And I include auto calibration before you print, sensors to detect mishaps during printing, like filament tangles or jams, and even the printer sensing when it might need some routine maintenance. For me, this graph confirms that 3D printing has moved on and pretty much all new 3D printers are expected to be smart to some degree. 
So does that interest extend to having a built-in camera so you can monitor prints and as a bonus, use that webcam to record time lapses of your prints. Looking at these results, I would argue that they're fairly important, but not as much as a priority as other items here. A feature we don't see as much these days is click to print from either a website or mobile app. Currently the Bamboo Handy app does a pretty good job of this, but do people actually use it and care? This one's pretty emphatic. One click printing is a novelty and most people don't really care about it. What about when we first receive the 3D printer, unbox it and put it together? Do people want something that's already ready to go out of the box or are they happy to do some simple assembly? An interesting result here, a lot of people are looking for a 3D printer that's a tool but they still don't mind putting in some work in the initial setup and assembly phase. What about being provided with a slicer with pre-made profiles to suit their printer and different materials and quality settings? I expected more of a skew towards people wanting this. Clearly they do, but it's not the highest priority. What about easy firmware modification? Either the Marlin source provided, or more ideally, if it's Clipper firmware, being able to edit and make changes right from the web interface. The response here is pretty clear. People want to be able to tweak their firmware, and they don't want to jump through lots of hoops to do so. Something we don't see that much is the ability to upgrade a printer later, whether it being adding an enclosure, or a system like the Prusa XL, where you can buy a single tool head model and add additional tool heads as you see fit and can afford it later on. And this is one of the strongest results here. People like tinkering and customizing, so manufacturers make sure you allow avenues for them to upgrade later on. What about customization? And any printer will have printable parts released freely by the community. But I'm talking more about a manufacturer's approach, like how the Magneto XS frame has unused screw threads to bolt things to later, and easily accessible electronics for additions. There's also printers like the Rat Rig, where you can choose exactly what hardware you use, as well as upgrades depending on your requirements. Customization is similar to upgrades. Manufacturers pay attention, we want to be able to make our printers our own. Do people care about environmentally friendly packaging, which is not something most manufacturers address? This is something I care about, but the responses here are indifferent, so manufacturers are justified and not prioritizing this. Finally, automatic part ejection, like you get off the shelf of the belt printer, or if you modify an existing design, like I have with this Delta. Clearly, most people don't really care about auto part ejection, and I guess that makes sense, as most people aren't running a print farm, therefore this remains a novelty rather than a necessity. It's pretty clear from this what people do and don't want, and I'll come back to this later. The final short section was other stuff, things that didn't fit elsewhere. And I started by asking if the current level of technical support was good enough. This is not specific to one brand, but rather in general. On the left, no. On the right, yes. So what I'm taking from this is meh. Technical support has probably improved, but there's plenty more room for further improvement. Next up, do you design your own parts? And only 1% couldn't design anything at all and were limited to downloading others' work. 20% could make simple parts. 39% were 50-50. 30% mainly did their own designs and 9% only did their own designs. So congratulations to all of you for being a capable bunch. Next, do you engage in tuning slicer profiles yourself? This one was pretty interesting. Very few people undertook no tuning, but most people liked pre-made profiles and did a little bit of tuning or significant tuning to get things to their liking. And 10% love tuning as an activity. Then I asked what innovations had impressed you the most over the last few years. And this is one where I have to read through the responses, searching for trends. Four areas came up the most. The first being high speed, which people put down to input shaping, clipper and core XY. Another area was specific technology. People appreciated ABL sensors like the Beacon, Bamboo Labs LiDAR and Piopoli's linear motors. Many people praised newfound convenience, with ABL being fitted as standard, along with removable beds and smart sensors for automation. And finally, multi-material was mentioned a lot, with Bamboo Labs AMS, Prusa's Tool Changer and various IDEX printers. Second last, I asked for your funniest or craziest ideas for a 3D printer, thinking maybe I would have a laugh and maybe even get a project. But as you can see, there was a lot of I don't knows there. So we did have a few people posting this, but we also had some good ones. Some people were hungry, some people wanted more character. It's probably a typo, but input shaving caught my eye. But what I can't get out of my head is a 3D printer that gives birth to baby 3D printers. Plenty of people wanted a portable 3D printer and some of them were outrageous like a printer on a drone, one that could drive itself around, and one that even operated up in the stratosphere. 
and some more serious ones, a lot of people wanted to mix up the form factor of 3D printers, adding multiple axes, tool changes with CNC and laser heads, tilting or rotating beds, multiple nozzles printing at once, etc. The final question was a chance for people to write something that they didn't have the chance to write elsewhere. Reading through, here were some trends. 3D printing is in a good state, but people hope it isn't ruined by mainstream success and close source machines. Multicolor and multi-material printing is good, but there is too much waste. It either needs to be reduced, or a company needs to give us a cheap way to reuse it. And people want manufacturers to think outside the box with 3D printer structure. It's time to explore new kinematics, new forms of materials, for instance, pellets or print recycling. Like last time, let's propose a possible 3D printer based on the survey results. Last time I proposed a modular core XY and I still think this is the best solution. In summary, this should have a cube frame so it's easy to add an optional enclosure, but now I think it should have clipper firmware, unmodified by the manufacturer, pre-installed and ready to go. The printer should be open source wherever possible. I think people want a complete ecosystem, but with cloud and AI components completely optional, and a big emphasis on upgradability, for instance, adding a second tool head later on. And that can extend to other components. If you make everything modular, you can change to what you want later on, be that a tilting bed, a pellet extruder, or a rotating tool head. A proven solid base for those that want the simple things, but endless possibilities for those looking for more. That's it. I found this interesting. I hope you did too. And I really hope manufacturers are paying attention. Thanks to everyone who responded, sharing their time as well as their opinions, and make sure to comment if anything has really rung true for you. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully the future of 3D printing is what we actually want. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.